Azure Cloud learners going for certification exams often get a not so good surprise when attempting associate level exams or expert level exams. And this panic comes in terms of case study type of questions which many of the exam givers are not prepared for. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today we are going to understand what are case studies and also see some sample questions that will help you prepare better for the Azure certification exams. Now friends, case study is a type of question in which you would be given a real business case or business need or business scenario. It normally starts with an overview followed by the requirement section where you would be presented with business goals. This section also includes technical requirements and user requirements. The other section that can be presented in a case study are planned changes and planned environment. And please do not worry if you don't understand any of these details. We will look upon all these sections when we will take a sample case study. Now let's look at some of the generic guidelines on case studies that you will also find when attempting exam. The first guideline says that case studies are not timed separately. You can use as much exam time as you would like to complete each case. However, there may be additional case studies and section on this exam. You must manage your time to ensure that you are able to complete all the questions included on this exam in the time provided. The second guideline says that to answer the questions included in the case study, you will need to reference information that is provided in the case study. Further, it says that case studies might contain exhibits and other resources that provide more information about the scenario that is described in the case study. Each question is independent of other questions in the case study. Then the third guideline says that at the end of case study, a review screen will appear. This screen allows you to review your answers and to make changes before you move to the next section of the exam. After you begin a new section, you cannot return to this section. So very important to note, once you have moved ahead of a case study, you cannot come back unlike the other type of questions where you can come back and edit your answers. And friends, at the end of this video, I will give you some tips that you can follow to better handle case study type of questions. So watch the video very carefully and please do not skip any part of the video. Now let's read our first case study on DP203. Please note that this is part 15 of DP203. Do not miss to watch earlier 14 parts of this series where I have already explained 185 questions with loads of tips, tricks and concepts on DP203. And as I mentioned in the opening part, any case study starts with an overview. Let's read it out. Blackboard Incorporations owns and operates 300 clothing stores across US. The company sells a variety of apparels and fashion accessories across various categories and age groups for men, women and kids. Blackboard Incorporation has a loyalty club whereby members can get daily discounts on specific clothes ranges by providing their membership number at checkout. Further, it says that Blackboard employs business analysts who prefer to analyze data by using Microsoft Power BI and data scientists who prefer analyzing in Azure Databricks notebooks. And now, as I mentioned in the opening section, we have requirement section that starts with business goals. And this one says that Blackboard wants to create a new analytics environment in Azure to meet the following requirements. First requirement is to see inventory levels across the stores. Data must be updated as close to real time as possible. Then the second requirement is to execute ad hoc analytical queries on historical data to identify whether the loyalty club discounts increases sales of discounted products. Thirdly, we have every four hours notify store employees about how many clothing orders to produce based on the historical demand from the sales data. Moving ahead, we have technical requirements. Here it says that Blackboard identifies the following technical requirements. First one is minimize the number of different Azure services needed to achieve the business goals. Then we have use platform as a service or pass offerings whenever possible and avoid having to provision virtual machines that must be managed by Blackboard incorporations. Thirdly, we have ensured that the analytical data store is accessible only to companies on premises network and Azure services. 
The fourth requirement says that use Azure Active Directory authentication wherever possible. And fifth one is that use the principle of least privilege when designing security. Then the sixth requirement says that stage inventory data in Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 before loading the data into analytical data store. Blackboard wants to remove transient data from the data lake storage once the data is no longer in use. Files that have modified date that is older than 14 days must be removed. And then we have limit the business analyst access to customer contact information such as phone numbers because this type of data is not analytically relevant. Moving on, we have ensured that you can quickly restore a copy of analytical data store within one hour in the event of corruption or accidental deletion. The next section that we have is planned environment. Now this section says that Blackboard plans to implement the following environment. The first one is the application development team will create an Azure event hub to receive real-time sales data including store number, date, time, product ID, customer loyalty number, price and discount amount from the point of sales POS system and output the data to data storage in Azure. The second one says that customer data including name, contact information and loyalty number comes from Salesforce, a SaaS application and can be imported into Azure only once every 8 hours. Row modified dates are not trusted in the source table. And then we have product data including product ID, name, category comes from Salesforce and can be imported into Azure only once 8 hours. Row modified dates are not trusted in the source table. Further on, it says that daily inventory data comes from Microsoft SQL Server located on a private network. And then we have Blackboard Incorporations currently have 5 TB of historical data and 100 GB of customer data. The company expects approximately 100 GB of new data per month for the next year. Moving ahead, it says that Blackboard will build a custom application named Exquisite Black to provide store employees with calculation result of how many prepared clothing items to produce every four hours. And then finally, we have Blackboard does not plan to implement Azure Express Route or a VPN between on-premises network and Azure. And now my friends, let's check out our first question based on this case study. The question starts with a note. It says that inventory level must be calculated by subtracting the current day's sales from the previous day's final inventory. And finally, the actual question says that which two options provide Blackboard with the ability to quickly calculate the current inventory level by store and product. Each correct answer presents complete solution. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. Let's check out what are the options given. The first option is that consume the output of Event Hub by Azure Stream Analytics and aggregate the data by store and product. Output the resulting data directly to Azure Synapse Analytics and then use Transect SQL to calculate inventory level. The second option is output event hub Avro files to Azure Blob Storage. Use Transect SQL to calculate inventory level by using Polybase in Azure Synapse Analytics. And the third one is consume the output of event hub by using Databricks. Use Databricks to calculate inventory levels and output the data to Azure Synapse Analytics. Moving on, the option D says that consume the output of Event Hub by using Azure Stream Analytics and aggregate the data by store and product. Output the resulting data into Databricks, calculate the inventory levels in Databricks and output the data to Azure Blob Storage. And finally, we have option E and that says the output Event Hub's Avro files to Azure Blob Storage trigger an Azure Data Factory copy activity to run every 10 minutes to load the data into Azure Synapse Analytics. Use Transact SQL to aggregate the data by store and product. And the correct answer for this question is option A and option E. Now let's talk about the first option. Here we have Azure Stream Analytics. So Azure Stream Analytics is a fully managed service providing low latency. It's highly available, scalable complex event processing over other streaming data in the cloud. And also remember my friends that you can use Azure SQL Data Warehouse Database as an output sync for your stream analytics jobs. 
coming to the option e where we have event hubs so event hub captures is the easiest way to get data in azure using data lake azure data factory and azure hd inside you can perform batch processing and other analytics using familiar tools and platform of your choice at any scale that you need and friends talking about documentation if you want to read more on azure stream analytics then this is the microsoft documentation here you can learn how to use Azure Stream Analytics with dedicated SQL pool in Azure Synapse Analytics. And besides that, one more related document to this question is this one, which tells you how to capture events through Azure Event Hubs in Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Storage. Links to both these documents are available in the description box. Now let's move to the second question of this case study. The question says that what should you do to improve high availability of real-time data processing solution? Your options are deploy identical Azure Stream Analytics jobs to paired regions in Azure, or should you deploy a high concurrency Databricks cluster? The third option is deploy an Azure Stream Analytics job and use the Azure Automation Runbook to check the status of the job and to start the job if it stops. Then the last option given is set data lake storage to use geo redundant storage also known as GRS. And the correct answer for this question is option A deploy identical Azure Stream Analytics jobs to paired regions in Azure. And friends, the reason is that Azure Stream Analytics guarantees job reliability during service updates. Part of being fully managed service, Azure Stream Analytics has the capability to introduce new service functionality and improvement at rapid pace. As a result, Stream Analytics can have service updates deploy on weekly basis or any other more frequent basis. And friends, no matter how much testing is done, there is always a risk of introducing a bug. So if you are running mission critical jobs, these risks needs to be avoided. You can reduce these risks by following Azure Pair Region model and that's exactly what is given in option A. Now let's move to the third question, a hotspot question. The question says that which Azure Data Factory components should you recommend using together to import the customer data from Salesforce to Data Lake Storage? And here my friends, you have to answer this question on three levels. The first one is integration runtime type and then we have trigger type and then you have to also tell the activity type. Let's talk about first for integration runtime type. And here you can see the options given are Azure Integration Runtime. The second option given is Self-Hosted Integration Runtime. And the third option is Azure SSIS Integration Runtime. And the correct answer for this question is option B, Self-Hosted Integration Runtime. And the reason is that Self-Hosted Integration Runtime is capable of running copy activity between a cloud data store and a data store in private network. And we also read in the question that the company Blackboard is operating both on cloud data store and a data store in a private network. So that's why self-hosted integration runtime is best suited as integration runtime type. And then we have trigger type. Here the options given are event based trigger and then we have scheduled trigger and the third one is tumbling window trigger. The correct answer for this one is schedule trigger and this is because schedule trigger option can be used to trigger jobs every eight hours. And finally, we have to tell what will be the activity type. The option given are copy activity, lookup activity and store procedure. And the correct answer for this part of the question is copy activity. And now let's check out our question number four, which is another variation for question number three. The question says that which Azure Data Factory components should you recommend using together to import daily inventory data for SQL to data lake storage? Now this question might be looking very similar to the previous one. However, in the previous question, we were asked about customer data, but this time we are asked about inventory data. 
the question is exactly the same except for this difference in the question and you can also observe that other sections of the question are also exactly the same we have same integration runtime data for which the answer is again self-hosted integration runtime and then we have trigger type for which the answer again is scheduled trigger and then we have activity type and this type as well we have copy activity I just wanted to show you what can be the different variations which Microsoft can present you with in the real exam. Now let's read our question number five. The question says that which Azure service and feature should you recommend using to manage transient data for data lake storage? And here you have to answer the question on two level. Firstly, you have to tell what service you will pick and which feature you will pick. So the option given for service are Azure Data Factory, Azure Storage and Azure Synapse Analytics. And the correct answer for this part of the question is option A, Azure Data Factory. And now let's check out the options given for feature. We have delete activity and then we have drop external table. The last option given is lifecycle management rule. The correct answer for this part of the question is option A, delete activity. Now let's do a drag and drop kind of question. Question number six says that which three actions should you perform in sequence to allow exquisite black app access to the analytical data store? And here you can see that we are given with some option. The first one is create a user defined database role that grants access to execute appropriate store procedure. The second one is register the exquisite black application in Azure AD. The third one is grant select permission on all the user table to the user of exquisite black application. And then as a fourth action, we have create a contained user in the database. The fifth option is map the login to the user in database. And the sixth option is create a login for the service principal on Azure SQL Server. Now let me show you the correct answers. The correct answer in sequence for this question is First, you have to register the exquisite black application in Azure AD. And then as a second step, you have to create a login for the service principal on Azure SQL Server. And then as a third action, you have to create a user defined database role that grants access to execute appropriate store procedures. I hope you like the case study and it will surely help you prepare better for the Azure certification. Now here are few tips. First of all, case study type of questions will really test you on your actual working knowledge. You have to answer a series of multiple choice questions, hot area questions, etc. All these questions are designed to test your ability to critically analyze a situation and apply practical Azure knowledge to reach to a solution. So here comes my first tip on case study. Read through the case study and understand the business situation thoroughly. Secondly, a very important exam tip is that you should not assume anything which is not written in the case study. And thirdly, my friends, it's very easy to lose the time track, especially when you're giving the case study type of question. Though there is no time limit for the case study itself, but surely there is a time limit for the overall exam. So be very cautious on the time that you devote on each section. And friends, just so you know, there is a countdown clock in the top corner that you can use to track your remaining time for the exam. And towards the end of this video, friends, if you're liking my efforts and think that I'm doing a good work in bringing free cloud education, please take a quick moment and hit that like button. It is only when you like the video, YouTube considers it worth spreading. And to help you better prepare for AZ-104 and DP-203, we have already a video series with loads of question bank. Many of our viewers have already watched these videos and cleared their certification exams. And friends, we also have a Azure fundamental series, which is currently going on and it is fully synced with Microsoft Slippers. Besides that, we also have a huge question bank on AZ-900. Almost 326 questions, a hugely popular series which many of the users have already seen and cleared their AZ-900. All these videos will surely help you pass certifications with flying colors. Links to all these videos are given in the description box. Thank you so much for learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. 
Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.